Hi, hi. We are now on chapter 11, and this is called the area rule. And think about what you know about area as we go along with the chapter 11. In the early 1950s, Dorothy Vaughn and the women working in the West Computing Office were always busy. Most days they worked in their own office, but sometimes other groups at the laboratory asked Dorothy to send one of her mathematicians over to their offices when the engineers needed extra help. One day, a group on the east side asked for help, and Dorothy decided to send Mary Jackson. Mary went over to the new office where she was to work with several white computers. Since Mary's office was on the west side, she wasn't familiar with all of the buildings on the east side. At some point during the day, she needed a break and asked her coworkers, can you direct me to the bathroom? They giggled. How would they know where to find her bathroom? The nearest women's bathroom was open to the white women, but not to Mary because she was black. There were colored bathrooms somewhere on the east side, but Mary didn't know where. She stormed off to look on her own. Negotiating racial boundaries was a daily task for African Americans. Mary was used to it, but something about the incident really bothered her. She was just as smart and just as talented as her coworkers. The Langley employee badge supposedly gave Mary access to the same workplace as her white coworkers. She came to work with the same education, maybe even more. She dressed each day as, she, as if she were on her way to a meeting with the president. She was a professional. Mary Jackson was angered, no, enraged, to have been confronted with such blatant prejudice in a workplace dedicated to scientific and rational thought. And she considered it absurd to be singled out for something as common as universal as going to the restroom. In the moment that her white coworkers laughed at her, Mary had been demoted from professional mathematician to second class human being. An unexpected offer. Still angry as she walked back to the West Computing later that day, Mary Jackson ran into the assistant section head at the four foot by four foot supersonic pressure tunnel, four foot SPT, a powerful wind tunnel located on the west side. Most African Americans were automatically careful about how they spoke around whites, wearing a mask that kept them from saying what they really meant. Mary let her mask slip when the engineer asked her how she was doing. Unable to control her anger, she let out steam and ranted about the insulting way she had been treated by the women that morning. Mary was a soft-spoken person, but she was also direct and forthright. She was a good judge of character, and she sensed that she could trust the engineer. She picked the right person to talk to. He didn't think her feelings were unreasonable or unjustified. Why don't you come work for me? He asked. He respected her as a person and admired her work as a mathematician. He knew she would be an asset to his team. Mary accepted his offer. She transferred over to his research team working with the SPT and the best tunnels for testing airplanes flying faster than the speed of sound. Here is a picture where it shows Mary Jackson. She was in the front row, far right in a group photo of the supersonic pressure tunnel group at the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory. Theoretical engineers. While a great deal of attention was placed on the air tunnels and test flights, Langley wasn't a bad place for theoretical engineers either. A theoretical engineer is someone who works with numbers and papers, designing aircraft based on ideas or theories, rather than using experiments and testing. Dorothy Hoover, who had, worked, who had started working in the West Computing the same year as Dorothy Vaughn, continued to thrive in her division, earning the title of Aeronautical Research scientist, a high ranking for a woman of color, of any color at that. In 1951, she published two reports, 
both detailed analysis of the swept back wings that were now standard in aircraft. What the wind tunnel and fresh engineers examined through direct observation, the theoreticians approached through complex math. They prepared 50 page papers where a single equation might take up most of an entire page. Dorothy Hoover and at least three other women working in this group published research reports between 1947 and 1951. The group leaders clearly valued and cultivated the talent of its female members. In 1952, Dorothy Hoover decided to take a leave of absence from engineering to go back to school. She resigned from Langley and returned to the academic life at Arkansas Agricultural, Mechanical, and Normal College, where she earned a master's degree in mathematics. Mary Jackson, on the other hand, threw herself into her work with her engineering team. She loved rolling up her sleeves and working with airplane models so she could understand the physical phenomena behind the calculations she worked on. Like many other former computers, she was on her way to becoming a Langley lifer. Someone who stayed with the agency for her entire career. The numbers don't lie. Soon after becoming a mathematician with the supersonic pressure tunnel, Mary Jackson was given an assignment by her boss's boss's boss, a division chief, one of the laboratory's top ranking managers and most respected researchers. He gave her instructions for working through a set of calculations. She, she did the work and delivered the finished assignment after double checking her results. Something didn't seem right to the manager who assigned the work. He insisted that Mary's calculations were wrong. Mary Jackson respectfully stood by her work. Mary and the division chief reviewed the numbers and finally discovered that the problem wasn't within her output, but with his input. He had given her the wrong numbers to use. Based on those numbers, Mary's calculations were indeed correct. When they realized that the mistake, he apologized to her. Mary's willingness to stand by her work earned her a reputation around the office as a smart and dedicated mathematician. Most mathematicians or engineers were good mathematicians, but for the most part, it was the women who knew how to work with the numbers. They were the experts. They checked each other's work and put red dots on the data sheets when they found errors. There were very, very few red dots. Some of the women were capable of lightning fast mental math. Others had a highly refined understanding of theoretical math. The best of the women made names for themselves for accuracy, speed, and insight. But having the independence of mind and strength of personality to defend your work in front of the most powerful aeronautical minds in the world, that's what got you noticed. That's what marked you as someone who should move ahead. That was Mary Jackson. So today, readers, I want you to be thinking about this as you go on to higher math and the math that you're learning today. Make it your best effort to learn all of your math facts because the more you do quickly, with speed, insight, and accuracy, the higher you will achieve in your mathematical careers. And if the ladies at Langley could do that against all the odds, you can do it just the same. See you next time, hi. Bye.